As much as I love five axis machining, there's still nothing as cool as a lathe. So we got a new one. So I wanna show you everything from day one delivery all the way through to today, about 10 months later. Everything we've learned, all the cool projects. Hope you guys enjoy, thanks. I'm gonna play a few clips for you here from delivery day as I uh, throw up on the screen here, um, you know, a little bit more information about what this machine actually is. I feel like one of the most common questions um, on a video such as this one is, you know, what, what is this thing and what does it cost and what was all involved? So there it all is right there. So this is a Doosan. We had a few quotes from other machine tool builders, including um, Hyundai, Okuma, Haas. Um, at the end of the day, um, this was the one. We had a few buddies in industry who had similar platform machines and so we just felt like we had the confidence with this one to pull the trigger and, and get it done you know very scary a lot of money all that good stuff but um at the end of the day this is going to be a 20 plus year machine for us we hope um and so that was that call it a day and let's get this thing in here and get to making parts here's uh cnm rigging from phoenix arizona they are the best of the best doing what they do we've used them a few times before and uh, been great so far they haven't dropped anything, so that's good. Um, delivery day is always stressful. You know, these guys are on kind of a tight schedule at all times and stuff, so um, it's always good to see it when it's uh, finally there and ready to go. Um, so got to just remove some shipping brackets, get the installation done, get some wiring going. Um, you can kind of see me, you know, powering this thing up for the first time, which was a blast. Um, how we also had some training going on. So this is a um, guy from Iemka, uh, which is the bar feeder manufacturer. So <clears throat> got that training knocked out and it was time to hit the, hit the road running. Um, so we actually had a part that we had to ship like right away because we were telling them, we, like, oh, well, we can make them part right away as soon as we get it powered up. But, um, you know, once we shipped that part, we were ready to go on actually figuring out this thing. So we're setting tools here with our automatic tool setter. You could kind of see how it just folds down and we measure the lengths of the tools. Here's a drill uh, touching off in the Z direction. And then, you know, kind of do the same thing with all of the um, turning tools. There's another Z and an X offset getting measured. So very cool machine. Love many of the automation features like that. This machine has a three inch um, through bore diameter maximum. So here's me changing the spindle liner. Um, we got a bunch of those included for different bar stock diameter sizes. So here's me, um, uh, loading a piece of material into the bar feeder, kind of see how you could drop it in from the top and you can really load this thing up with a bunch of material and, you know, ideally run in the middle of the night if, if you can justify it. So you can see the process here of the bar getting loaded. Um, you know concentric to the spindle and getting pushed through um, so very cool automation tool here here's kind of the process you can see when the bar comes out and gets pushed up against a stop so you can control the length and um, reset for your next part as they come out of the machine so I'll show the entire process of what happens to a part. So you saw me load the material in and then now it's getting machined and then now it's gonna get parted off. Um, so here comes our Iskar parting tool to uh, remove the part from the bar and then it lands into this catcher. In this case, we're not using the sub spindle, but yeah, that little bucket gets dumped into basically a uh, chute and then a conveyor belt sends it out to this little basket that I'm probably gonna to try to improve at some point, but for now it works. Um, so the largest diameter that we can feed through the spindle, and like you see here, is three inch diameter, which is pretty awesome. Um, much bigger than many comparable size machines and stuff, so it's just very cool to be able to part off and feed that size diameter. This is a heat treated 4140, we're making some ninja stars just getting in trouble here uh playing around but this machine is cool because you can also you know switch the chuck and really make big parts this is a 10 inch diameter aerospace part that we're just kind of going to town and trying to figure out how to make the chips and not be too stringy and this was a two-op lathe part but it also had a bunch of milling and had to make the soft jaws for both sides so a part like this we're very proud of good stuff 
Um, I want to talk about the clearances between the two spindles because this is a sub spindle so you can do both sides of the part and pass between. Um, here's our Iskar parting tool. This was kind of one of the first mistakes that we had was that um, you can see where the red cutting face is and then where the clearance area is in blue. So depending on what you're trying to do, you might not have clearance between the sub spindle and the main spindle. You can see here that this one, you know, you're able to get very close, um, but that tool won't work great for the sub. Um, so here's a part, it's a golf ball marker that we made a lot of, and like a part like this, the length is very short. And so you're gonna get this nipple on the end if you don't have the right tooling set up. So this was just, you know, a lesson there to just think and work hard with your tooling supplier. Um, here's both chucks. Uh, one is a three jaw and one is a collet chuck system from Royal. We love the Royal collet system. Um, the only real downsides to it are that these collets are very expensive. So one of the things that we wanted to figure out from the get-go is how are we going to hold many different diameters um, and not break the bank because these are like five or six hundred dollars each. Um, and they have a very limited range, you know, like this is a half inch one right here. It can pretty much only hold half inch. Um, so here I'll pull up the website and you can kind of just see how many different options and like they are a great company, very high quality product, different sizes. You can get different shapes, um, very cool system. But again, I don't want to pay this much money just to hold a new bar diameter. So we made this system of aluminum jaws where we added these uh, tapped holes to the face of the largest collet that we have, which is three inch. And then we basically can uh, just swap these jaws in and out um, with some screws on the face. Um, and this gives us the ability to just very cheaply make, um, you know, any size we need as well as any op two geometry that we need. Um, if anyone's interested in the system, um, let me know. I mean, it's been working well for us. We basically just use this fixture pin thing that comes from Royal as well, and you lock down on it, and then you bore the jaws out to whatever you need. Um, so, you know, here's like some inch and a half diameter ones that we made uh, right off the bat because we needed that for a job, and we haven't had any issues with them so far. Um, been working well. So really proud of that because it's really saving um, the uh, financial side of things. On the opposite end of the financial spectrum is this pretty cool tool from Algra. Um, not only do you have to pick the 90 degree positions like the other ones, um, you can also pick any angle you want in between. Um, so going back to those ninja stars that I was showing earlier, uh, you know, we were like, hey, we can just pick the bevel angle and just run it as a facing path um, with this angle adjustable angle tool. So here you can see us just kind of learning and playing and figuring out how to cut that bevel on there. Um, these things are awesome. It's like a little fidget spinner um, ninja star. And so, yeah, you guys should get one. But we're also learning all sorts of cool abrasive stuff and sharpening and just trying to get into that world. So, but back to the machine. So here's the y-axis. The full travel is being shown here, um, which is very cool feature of this machine because it basically makes it where it's not just a lathe, you know, it really is a mill and you can even just make purely mill parts on this thing if you can do it. Um, so here we are doing some tiny little end mills, tiny little drills. Here's a tiny tap. Um, so very useful machine to just finish parts in just one operation, just be pretty hands-free. And uh, this local guy loves it. Another issue that we had was holding some of these really small micro carbide boring bars. So here's the sleeves that came with the machine and they only went down to three eighths of an inch and we just needed to have some adjustability and be able to do some stuff with them. So we made these holders here. So uh, we're able to slide them in the Z direction to fit our needs depending on what tools are around it and stuff. So this is just another one of those things um, that you sometimes just kind of have to make. I don't know. Um, the tooling of lathes is just very different compared to mills. Um, and same with like the plumbing, you know, it's just, you gotta, sometimes you gotta make, just make stuff. 
Um, but here's showing some pretty cool live tooling holders that go both directions. Like look at the machining quality on that on the right. It's just like this machine is just made so well. It's so nice to work with. Uh, here's some ISCAR tools that are plumbed through for coolant. It's just always such a mission trying to figure out how to plumb these things. Like here's a through coolant boring bar and you could just see how we ended up doing this weird hose thing. We've done all sorts of odds and ends for customers like these long shafts here. Uh, we've done some repair work too, which we don't love doing, but um, we did. So here's a spline shaft that broke. This is for a large machine that grades roads. So we came up with an interface between the two parts and they ended up getting pressed together with a 50 ton press. And um, yeah, we, we did end up because of tooling reasons finishing this spline on the UMC just because it was going to be a little bit easier. But um, yeah, fun one there. We've also been doing lots of upgrades to our coolant washdown system. So uh, something like these nozzles, we've been turning on the lathe and then these are what actually spray the coolant inside of the machine to um, kind of prevent the chips from building up. So we did a whole video about this already. So card here to that if you're interested. We've also been making jewelry because why not? Uh, we wanted to make something comfortable with a bunch of, uh, you know, blingy facets on it. So we started here by turning the ID in the lathe and then uh, bringing it over to the UMC as well to cut all those little shiny facets into the part. I've been wearing it for six months. I am a lucky guy. Aww. We also wanted to learn threading on our lathe. So we've had this weld table here for a while that has these tapped holes in the top and they've been collecting a bunch of just debris and dirt in there. So we had these 3D printed plugs that we had been using for a while that didn't stand the test of time. Uh, so we said, now that we got a lathe, let's make some stainless steel ones that do basically the same thing, but are just better. So this was a fun project. Uh, we had to make a ton of these. I think we needed like 950 to cover the whole table, but I'm just gonna wrap this one up here. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll be sure to get to every last one of them. Um, thanks for your support. Thanks for still being here. Um, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Peace.